okay so what is a monochromatic wave when you say, when do you say that a wave is monochromatic yes any a wave which has single wavelength is called as monochromatic wave and why we are discussing monochromatic wave is because of this equation which is this equation what what if you want to name this equation what will you call it okay de broglie wavelength which is exactly what you just said it is wavelength of matter wave so if we represent if we want to believe uh, de broglie if we want to act on or if we want to analyze this concept of matter waves and then uh, we will first thing we come across is de broglie's wavelength because de broglie was the first one to um, first one to try to describe the waves which are matter waves and therefore we will begin with that now clearly if you consider this wavelength what you what we have is a monochromatic wave which means we have a wave which is spreading like this and then i'm also saying that it is a plane wave what is a plane wave plane wave is basically when when you call a wave plane wave is if you have different uh, waves drawn in space like this and if you then join all the points in the wave which have the same phase then if that all the collection of those points if it it forms a plane then it is called as plane wave and therefore if you consider a wave which is drawn like this then you will see that all these waves are have these phases so if you draw if you collect all the points which are having the same phase for two dimensional diagram it's going to be a, st a straight line but if you imagine that these waves are spread all over the space then a plane is formed and whenever you have such waves it is called as plane wave that is that that is why we have the term plane what is plane in there is it is uh, there is a plane which is collection of all the points of the waves which are having the same phase okay and such waves you know are described by this equation y their displacement is described by this equation y of xt is equal to a sin kx minus omega t so this gives us displacement of plane waves now what are different let's uh, consider the different quantities in this equation what is a in here in this equation it is the amplitude of the plane waves it simply means that by how much what is the maximum displacement of that wave and when i say displacement now you should think of the quantity which represents the wave for example in electromagnetic wave it is the electric field so what is the maximum electric field which is reached when you express wave in this sinusoidal form so we are talking about a wave which is spread like this then k here is 2 pi by lambda if you have to write k in terms of its wavelength it is 2 pi by lambda and what is it called as it is called as angular wave number and omega is 2 pi f where f is the frequency of wave in this course we will use nu for the to represent the frequency so this is omega is called as the angular frequency of the plane waves right so this you already know that you can represent a plane wave in one dimensional plane wave like this by by this equation a sin kx minus omega t now what you can also do is you can consider this equation for the plane wave which is a into e to the power minus omega t minus kx which is basically same uh equation in uh, which is written in sinusoidal form if you use euler's formula in this second equation what you will get is you will get cos omega t minus kx minus i sin omega t minus kx and then what you can do is you can say that this y of xt represented by this exponential function is the displacement of the wave which i am writing and then i can say that i'll consider only imaginary part of this function instead of considering both real and imaginary part i can say that i'll choose 
the imaginary part of this function to pre represent my plane wave, which basically is the same equation. Because recall that imaginary part of a complex number is real. So imaginary part of this function is also real. And then I can say that my uh, this is the function which uh, represents the plane wave. Now, why you choose exponential over sine is for multiple reasons. It is one single reason is that it is mathematical convenient and it behaves just like sine and cosine e to the power i anything oh, behaves just like sine and cosine under calculus but when you differentiate sine you get cos which is simplified in case of exponential functions so they behave very similar and in fact it is even simpler when you use exponential form it is simpler so just for mathematical convenience since the physics is not changed when you write physics uh, uh, when you write displacement of wave in this form we will use this form so this is basically the same displacement of wave which is represented in as an exponential function so uh, in general a plane wave is can be described or displacement of a plane wave can be described by this these equations that i have written we will now use this exponential form of this displacement why we are discussing it is because of the de Broglie's hypothesis that if we want to discuss matter waves, then de Broglie's equation gives us the first clue about those matter waves that they have the wavelength lambda is equal to h by p. And from that point, now we are uh, we are trying to analyze or we are trying to get into depth of these matter waves, how they are formed, how they can be described, how they can be used to describe matter or particle and so on and so forth. And therefore, we have started with this. Now, what will change in these equation for matter waves is following. Suppose you, you are representing a particle which is moving uh, with this plane wave equation. So if you use this formula to represent wave function of matter waves for, for, for uh, matter waves, if we call it matter wave, then it is the wave function which describes these waves. And this psi now what we are doing going to do is we are going to describe this psi as a plane wave. Why? Because de Broglie's equation lambda is equal to h by p hints towards a wave which has the same wavelength, which is monochromatic. Given a particle, if it has momentum p, then its wavelength is lambda. And therefore, we are starting with that with that idea of uh, matter waves that it has a it has a constant wavelength given by this equation h by p, and we are trying to build upon that idea. And we, we then took this equation of displacement of plane wave and tried to write psi of t, which is a into e to the power minus i omega t minus kx. Now, what we want to do is we want to find out what is omega and what is k for these, wave, for these uh, matter waves. Because we know in the above case, it is actual frequency because displacement is fluctuating and uh, there is wavelength pattern repeats after a particular length in space that we call as lambda and from that uh, we have this equation now we have to start with that equation and we have to find out what is going to be k and what is going to be omega for the plane uh, for the matter wave for these de broglie's waves which are representing some particle remember we are trying to represent a traveling particle which is traveling with momentum p using this uh, concept of de Broglie's wavelength, the concept of matter waves. So what is going to be k? Wave equation k is 2 pi lambda. But now I want to op I want to have a relation for k for these matter waves. So what where do I get k now? Of course, for from lambda and what lambda I should use, I have to use the de Broglie's wavelength, which is h by p. Therefore, what I get is for matter waves, what I get is this is going to be 2 pi h by p because h by p is the wavelength of the matter waves and therefore this becomes p into 2 pi by h now there is a reason oh, there is a reason why i have written it like this it is 2 pi by h but h cross is another universal it is another constant which or another notation which is very commonly uh, used in quantum mechanics where h cross is equal to h by 2 pi why you use it is because of uh, short form notation this h by 2 pi terms comes as a factor so many times that to save your time and space to write this h by 2 pi there is specific notation given to that which is written as h bar so this h bar is equal to h by 2 pi and therefore k 
then becomes p by h cross okay so we can replace the k in this above plane wave equation by p by h cross and we will have k for our wave number angular wave number for the matter wave similarly now we want to see what is omega how can i do it we will again take hint from this equation e is equal to h nu where nu is the frequency which is actually for photons this equation is for photons but now since we are building upon the idea of plane waves we will try to see what it is so e therefore is equal to nu omega is 2 pi nu remember that angular uh, frequency is given by this relation so here this this equation is basically h into nu is omega by 2 pi and therefore what we have is this e is equal to h cross into omega or i can write omega as h cross no not not h cross e by h cross so we can now plug these two relations for omega and for p into the description of plane wave as given by this equation it's a to the power e to the power minus i k x minus omega t isn't it that is how i have written it omega t minus k x okay i have taken minus sign oh yeah k i have to write it as positive so this is omega t minus k x doesn't matter actually you can change the symbols as far as they are opposite in sign this wave is always a wave you should uh, maybe you recall you can recall from this uh, from uh, last year oscillations and waves that as far as you have opposite signs for kx and omega t it is it represents that function represents a wave which is traveling towards positive side of x axis whereas if they have the same sign either taken common either both if both are negative or both are positive then that function represents a wave which is traveling towards the left so here we are trying to represent a particle which is having momentum p and since it has positive side sign by default we are talking about a particle which is moving along positive direction if you have a particle which is moving in the opposite direction this sign will change both of them will have the same sign and then you can either have plus or minus for both these terms in exponential that's also signs don't doesn't matter much okay so i all i need to do is replace this e to the power minus i by h cross i'll take h cross 1 by h cross common in that exponential uh, bracket and then what i get is et minus px where e is the energy of the particle and p is the momentum of the particle okay so this is how we are now going to describe a particle which has momentum p so this equation represents or describes a matter wave corresponding to particle moving with momentum p okay and and we are now discussing one dimensional case and therefore i am not writing this momentum as a vector we are considering uh, that particle is moving only along in one direction we are not worried about second and third quadrant and therefore p i am writing it as momentum so now if we uh, start with de broglie's hypothesis describe a matter wave which has wavelength lambda as given by de broglie's wavelength then we have to call that wave as a plane wave uh, with this equation which is described by this psi now next is to next what we want to see what are the issues which 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 we have suppose we we describe the matter wave uh, in this form in this particular with this particular equation then it's not actually a very good representation or it doesn't describe the particle uh, correctly we need some more tricks 
so that we can we can describe a particle by this wave for uh, wave uh, else because there are issues with this particular representation so let's try to first find out what are issues in describing traveling particle as a plane wave everyone following me are you with me so far it is the simple story that we are going on don't get too much lost into mathematics because now in a couple of in a few minutes i'm going to dive into the mathematical equations so before we get into that i just want to recap what we are seeing so seeing here historically we had hint that uh, light shows particle nature so de broglie came he said that even the particles are waves and then he gave lambda or the wavelength to describe a part a matter wave for a particle corresponding to a particle which is traveling with momentum p and that equation is lambda is equal to h by p now since he is talking about a particle which is traveling with momentum p we get lambda is equal to h uh, we get a wave which is plane wave which is uh, described by this equation sinusoidal uh, a into e to the power minus i h cross e t by minus p x or the sinusoidal function and now if we we stick to this particular way of representing the particle if we stick to this particular equation for the wave function of the particle then there are some issues we cannot describe a matter wave as as a plane wave all the time because there are some issues with that and we want to see what are those issues so what is the first issue i want you to try to guess it okay remember what is psi of t psi of xt or rather mod psi of xt gives the probability density right now this psi which is given by this equation by this plane wave equation is giving the probability of finding the particle at the particular point at the particular instance of time right so if we consider this plane wave which is like this i will again draw, draw it i have drawn it before but I'll, i'll once again draw it so there are two ways to imagine that if i uh, consider a particular point in time or consider a particular point in space and if i see how this psi varies as a function of time then it will be simple harmonic motion that particular point or the displacement at that particular point will fluctuate sinusoidally uh, with with maximum displacement uh, as a similarly if i take a snapshot of this plane wave at a given instance of time then it is spread like this it is spread to plus infinity and on the other side it is it is spread towards the minus infinity so basically this wave is if, if you mathematically write this equation this is a wave which is spreading from minus infinity to plus infinity you are not uh, localizing it at all your your wave can be anywhere from minus infinity to plus infinity if you represent it by this equation of plane wave and why we have that equation because we took hint from de broglie that if particle is moving with p then it has wavelength lambda and in fact later when experiments were done after the proposition they actually found out that the particle do show particles do show that wave nature so mod psi square is probability density is one part of the story second part is if we describe the wave as the sine wave as given by the above equation then what is the first trouble that we get in anyone want to guess even i take a particular instance of time then what i have is i have these peaks periodically and everywhere the probability of finding particle is going to be same and now if i treat it as if treat this function which has the same uh, which which is also function of time then what will what happens with this description is probability of finding the particle is constant is same from minus infinity to plus infinity all over the place right this this how you figure out what is the moment of the particle then actually this happens that you have no clue of where the particle is actually it can be anywhere in the universe and you have no clue of whereabouts of the particle so therefore if we describe a wave 
which has precise for which if you describe a particle for which you know the momentum precisely tumhala exactly maiti hai momentum ka hai then that particle is described by this plane wave according to de broglie's hypothesis and then what i'll say is we have no information about position of particle and you don't want to have this situation as a physicist tumcha kade you are describing describing an electron you are describing an atom then you don't want that to be anywhere in the universe you of course are doing some experiment and therefore you want to find the particle you want to have the particle confined to some region jithe tumhala bagta il ki hat kutha hai particle so this is a difficult situation to handle experimentally you don't want a particle which is which can be anywhere because you uh, you won't be able to perform the experiment with such particle so this is the first issue with that if you describe it as a plane wave which has the same momentum then you don't know where the particle is uh, this is something that you have already come across in in terms of a principle which principle am i talking about here right exactly good so this is this is not hint basically this is certainty principle in when it comes when when this uncertainty principle is uh, in context of quantum mechanics then it is uh, uh, heisenberg's uncertainty principle which is which is the which is more precise to precise term to call it right so this is the hint of uncertainty principle that what basically heisenberg's principle says that delta x into delta p is greater by, than h cross by 2 where delta x is uncertainty or error in measurement of position and delta p is uncertainty or error in measurement of momentum in this case we know the momentum exactly because p is equal to h by lambda we are describing it as a wave with uh, constant or with, with the same wavelength therefore we know exactly what p is and therefore there is no uncertainty in measurement of position this is zero and therefore delta x is infinity you there is you don't have a clue delta x is infinity means that uncertainty in position of the particle is infinity it can be anywhere from minus infinity to plus infinity so this is the problem you want is you want to have something some information about both these uh, things you want to know at least to some error finite error what is the position and with some finite error you want to know what is the momentum we'll come to that but to begin with this is the first problem in describing a matter wave as a plane wave with constant momentum and with, with constant or with the same wavelength there is second issue also which is to do with speed or let's call it phase velocity i'll, I'll, I'll give the title as the phase velocity and then you will see how it connects to the speed of the particle okay so let's try to now figure out what is the velocity of this wave this is the wave plane wave which is describing the matter wave and how do you find out the velocity of any wave you have to use this relation v is equal to i'll call it as vp this always is equal to frequency into wavelength of the wave and this is true for all the waves sound electric field electricity electromagnetic waves waves on the string and matter waves it is true all uh, everywhere so let's let's use the same equation and see what we get we just uh, new is e by h cross it's e by h cross isn't it or e, it's e by h simply e is h kya hota hai e by h i'm sorry so nu is e by h because h nu is equal to e and what else we also have p in this equation basically we started with k and that all that but p is what is p h by lambda and therefore this vp is equal to this e nu is uh, e by 
h and lambda is h by p right i am just using this equation in this in that square bracket and this h will cancel i am left with vp is equal to e by p okay now let's build upon this e or the kinetic energy here we are talking about a of a particle which is freely moving we are not uh, we are not saying that the particle is experiencing any potential it's it's a free particle and that is traveling with p which is described by this plane wave mc square and p is m into v so therefore where v is the here v is speed of the particle or velocity of the particle i'll say it is since the wave is describing a wave which is traveling towards the positive x axis this gives us the velocity along with its direction and then this phase velocity vp which is equal to c square by v is called as phase velocity right and with this now we come up with the second issue with in describing the particle as this plane wave what is that equation what is the issue if we treat the particle if we have a particle with non zero rest mass when the particle is seen from a frame of reference which is stationary to that particle then its mass is non zero okay it has some positive mass even when the particle is observed from a frame of reference in which it is stationary and that is basically the concept of rest mass so we have a particle which has non zero rest mass and it is traveling with velocity v and if we find out what is the phase velocity of the particle in this way what happens is we get this equation c square by uh, v which is which is greater than c because v cannot be more than c as far as it is a particle with non zero rest mass therefore this phase velocity is equal to c square by v which is always greater than c and therefore it cannot describe the velocity of the particle in fact if we don't know the position of particle at any given instance of time there is no point in talking about the uh, phase velocity uh, talking about the velocity of the particle tanchi position as aplyala kai mahit nahi tyacha velocity baddal kai bolnar hai apan to ek second at ikade kute tari asel asu shakto dusra second at tithe kute tari asu shakto so this this phase velocity of the plane wave in this way has to do or rather has nothing to do with the actual velocity of the particle okay so these are the two issues of course so it's not that we you, you cannot represent a particle with a plane wave you can of course do it and that is simple if you if you measure the momentum correctly then you are basically describing the particle as plane wave but if you do it then you have no idea about whereabouts of the particle you don't have a clue about position of the particle and say, okay and then what happens is you get a phase velocity which is uh, which is uh, which is actual motion of the particle from this phase velocity in fact you cannot talk about position of motion of the particle because you don't know what is you can you don't you are not assigning any position to the particle so there is no question of how the position changes with time which is basically motion right so these are the two issues which are which are to be overcome if you want to represent these matter waves and the clue is or the solution is to start mixing the waves 